Hi, and welcome to MongoDB Atlas on Google Cloud. If this is your first time hearing about MongoDB Atlas, let me give you a quick overview of what it's all about. Atlas is a data platform built by developers for developers. At its heart is MongoDB, a general purpose document database offered as a multi cloud service. Multi cloud means that you can easily distribute your data across different cloud providers. Atlas also lets you add and remove nodes in new regions without downtime, protects your data with pre-configured security features, and suggests indexes to improve the performance of your queries. But MongoDB Atlas is a lot more than the MongoDB database. It's a fully integrated platform with a set of managed cloud services for building and deploying applications. You'll see some of these services in action today. So we've established what MongoDB Atlas is, but how can you start using it? The good news is that you can subscribe to Atlas right from the Google Cloud Marketplace. Let's look at three demonstrations of MongoDB Atlas on Google Cloud. In our first demo, I'll show you how to create a serverless database. In the second, you will learn how to perform sentiment analysis with Cloud Natural Language API and integrate that with Atlas functions. And finally, we will learn how to build a machine learning model on Atlas data with BigQuery. Serverless platforms promise three advantages over traditional architectures, auto-scaling from zero to billions of requests per second, improved developer productivity, and a billing model where you pay for what you use. But most serverless architectures overlook the fact that traditional databases are not built to scale automatically. To solve this problem, you can create a serverless instance in MongoDB Atlas. Let's see how. Let's build our serverless database in Atlas. I'm presenting it with three configurations over here, and I'm going to select serverless. Then I will select Google Cloud as a cloud provider, the region in Belgium, which is physically closer to me, a basic backup, and a name for our instance. Our deployment is ready. Now let's connect to the database. First, I will allow access from anywhere. Then I will create a database user. And then I will choose connect your application. I'm presented with a connection string that I can use to connect to my database. In this demo, we'll combine Atlas App Services and Google Cloud's Natural Language API to analyze the sentiment of comments left to our product. Based on this sentiment analysis, we may derive insights for what products our users like. We have a web application for cake recipes. Our users can browse the recipes and leave their comments. The comments are persisted in an Atlas cluster. We will set up a database trigger that listens for changes in our comments collection. Every time a new comment is added, a trigger will run an Atlas function. An Atlas function is essentially a piece of JavaScript code that gets executed on the cloud. Our specific function will call the Google Cloud Natural Language API to analyze the sentiment of the comments that was added and persist that enriched comment document back to the database. First, I will enable the Natural Language API and generate a new API key that we can use in our app service. This is the data that we have in our database. As you can see, we have a cakes collection and also a comments collection. Once again, we want to intercept any new documents coming to the comments collection and analyze the sentiment of the comment. Let's head over to the App Services tab and create a new app. I will add a new value and a secret to make sure we are accessing our API key securely. Now I will link the secret to a value that we can access from within an Atlas function. We can now set up our trigger. We will connect it to our cluster and database. And finally, the comments collection. Here we will also define the Atlas function that needs to be executed whenever this trigger is triggered. Let's take a look at the function one by one. First, we extract the API key from the value that we just added. Then we extract the comments document from the change event. 
we send an HTTP POST request to the Natural Language API, we extract the sentiment from the response body, and finally we update the comments document by setting the sentiment as a field. Let's save our trigger. And now we can head back to the comments collection to make sure our trigger works. And as you can see, our document now has a sentiment field. The sentiment has an analysis for each of the sentences. So the first sentence has a very high score because it is very positive, and the second sentence is a bit more neutral, so it has a lower score. In this example, we use the Natural Language API, but you can connect plenty of other Google Cloud APIs and use them within your Atlas functions. In this demo, we will analyze MongoDB Atlas data with BigQuery. First, we'll use Dataflow to create a batch pipeline that reads data from Atlas and saves it to BigQuery. Then we will create a k-means ML model on the data that we ingested. I have already enabled the BigQuery API and I open the user interface for BigQuery. Let's go ahead and create a new empty dataset where we will store our Atlas data. I will copy the dataset ID and head over to Dataflow. We can create a job using the MongoDB Atlas template. After we start the job, we can take a look at the job graph. We have different stages. The first one is reading documents from the Atlas database, then we're transforming them to BigQuery tables, and finally we are writing them to BigQuery. When the job is completed, all of these stages will turn green, and we can go back to BigQuery to analyze our data. Let's take a look at the movies table that we just created. As you can see, we have an ID and the source data as an unpacked JSON. Let's fix that. This query will allow us to unpack the movies and add additional fields based on the JSON data that we have ingested. The operation was successful and we have extracted the data into a new collection. Let's see what's inside it. As you can see, now we have additional fields, which actually make sense. We have the title, the IMDb votes, type of the movie, and basically a data model that matches a lot more our data model in Atlas. Let's create a key means clustering model based on this data. We're selecting the IMDb rating and the tomatoes, rodent tomatoes rating, and we're creating a key means model based on these two fields. We have to be careful to make sure that our collection names match. And we can finally go and see our model. As you can see, we have easily created the k-means model with only a few clicks on our Atlas data. K-means clustering is one of the simplest and most popular unsupervised machine learning algorithms. There are many more sophisticated machine learning algorithms and analytics tools available in BigQuery. You can easily apply them on your Atlas data. And what's even cooler is that instead of running batch jobs, you can set up a bidirectional real-time sync between Atlas and BigQuery, allowing you to analyze your data without moving it manually. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget that you can subscribe on MongoDB Atlas right from the Google Cloud Marketplace.